All right, this video is going to demonstrate how we can set up the clock properly on the quick stick board. Um, once you kind of get past, uh, you know, your basic uh, download, you know you can download code and, you know, things are kind of working your board. I always like to make sure that, you know, the clocks are set up and I know exactly what, you know, you know the chip is doing. Um, so some of the examples uh, I'm going to show in the videos, I've uploaded them to the Freescale Cup Wiki. Um, as you can see, here's the address. If you type in Freescale Cup Wiki in Google, you'll get there. Some example programs. Um, you know, if you look under, I believe it is, we go to main, there's boards, uh, QuickStick K40, there's some example programs. I'm going to put the links to videos up there later. So uh, the example we're going to look here is called Clock Setup Sysstick. Now this example covers a bunch of different things, and I'm going to break it up into a little, uh, several different videos. Right now we're focused on primarily uh, you know, the clock in this video. Now, if you look on the schematic for the quick stick, there is a 4 megahertz crystal. Now, we can clock this device really fast, uh, up to 100 megahertz, so we're certainly not going to run it at 4. Um, so we're going to see how we bump it up. Now, I got an example of how to do this from the Kinetis peripheral uh, quick reference. So you can look through here and they have an example. Now the difference is uh, their examples are mostly for the tower boards, K4 to K6. It has an 8 megahertz crystal. I modified it to work with a 4 megahertz crystal. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how we do that. So go ahead and grab this example and um, we'll take a look at the code. I already have it imported into my own project uh, workspace. and. Uh, like I said, there is a bunch of different stuff in this file. We'll just try to look at the clock. So you'll notice in I kind of I try to organize my sources. So under CPU, there is a file called clock.c. Um, in my main function, I refer to the header file uh, as CPU slash clock.h. Um, the reason I have this in here is by default the the um, compiler or the preprocessor in the compiler will look at this project headers folder but won't necessarily go drill down into subfolders. There's a way to set it up in the project um, settings to look at other folders, but you know I just kind of code in the folder name. Well let's go and look in the clock.c. Now there is one function really in clock.c and it's called init clock. And what this is going to do for us is if you just call this function, it'll set up the device, um, I'm sorry, it will set up the Kinetis device to use that 4 megahertz reference and generate a core clock of 96 megahertz. Now, um, unfortunately, you know, one of the hardest things to do in some of these higher end chips is setting up the clock can be somewhat difficult because it's not so much enabling the crystal it's just that there's a lot of different clock modes, and there's often phase lock loops um, built into the uh, built into the chip. So it's really good to kind of look through an example uh, and, and, and go from there. So before we go any further, I want to bring your attention to the reference manual for the Kinetis. There's a whole chapter you can read through on the clock generator and see how it works. But I kind of like to see in general you know, how the clocks are used in the chip. Now chapter 5 is the clock distribution and there's this nice picture kind of showing how this works. So there is a, you know, s the main input for the crystal is this EXTOL and uh, XTOL that will um, generate a 4 megahertz. But you can see that there's some multiplexers. It eventually gets fed to a PLL, then eventually to some output dividers. There are several, you know, outputs of the multi-purpose clock generator. The the first one we're con you know concerned about is the core clock. That's what the actual Cortex M4 core is, you know, clocked at. Now the other one is the bus clock. This is usually half of the core clock, and this is what clocks most of the peripherals. Now, if we scroll down a little bit in this file, it'll kind of tell us what. Uh, what kind of clocks go to the different modules. Now in most cases the system clock goes to all of the peripherals. It's not always but most of the time. 
and then the peripherals can do things with the system clock, uh, like divide it down even further. Now it's important to know that because um, uh, uh, some use the bus clock, some use the system clock. You kind of want to know what those numbers are, but in most cases, uh, the clock to the uh, the peripherals are disabled. You have to enable them to the particular peripherals before you can use them, and that's in the system integration module where you can enable the, the different clocks, the different modules. Now let's kind of go back. Now that you know that, um, this kind of you know, just keep in mind this is this is so you know what um, what the default clock going into the different modules. Like if you want to use the flex timer, you know the bus clock is one source, and you have, for example, these other two clocks. So if you simply call this function, assuming your hardware is okay, it should just work. Now one thing I want to show you is that you notice there's this little keyword in front of this called relocate code. If we look in the project headers, the relocate code is actually another macro that uses this uh, del spec, um, you know, uh, statement, uh, which is based upon this pragma. It turns out there was an errata uh, for the um, uh, in uh, first couple versions of silicon for the Kinetis that uh, basically said that if you modify the system dividers um, in the in the Kinetis while executing from flash meaning the code that is actually um, you know these dividers right here if you modify those in the modify the one going to the flash while executing from flash it is possible that the chip will hang or uh, have undefined behavior. So the workaround was to execute the code from RAM. Now there, there's a bunch of different ways you can do this. Um, this was a, a, a method in the help, kind of buried in the help files, that if you kind of put this in front, and as long as you have these uh, pragmas and whatnot, it'll do it. Now what, what exactly this code's doing, it's basically saying, Re, you know, we want to place the code in the dot data section of the linker file, um, the linker command file. And if we look at the linker command file, oh, and where where is it here? And let me slide this over. Linker file. Oop, that's not where it's at. Um, so internal flash linker file startup code. No, it's not in there. Um, Uh, project settings, linker files, flash.lcf. There is a the data section, which is kind of specified right here. Uh, the data section is a section in the linker file that is basically for any data that needs initialized before execution, meaning let's say you had a bunch of variables that are initialized. Um, uh, the, the way initialization works in C is uh, before you even jump to the main routine, there's a basic initialization routine that will copy from flash into RAM uh, the, the initialization values. Well, you can place code in there, and what that means is a whole section of a function that's in flash can be copied to RAM. So if you just put things in the data section, um, uh, you'll it'll be copied from flash into RAM. You can call the function you know, and, you know, you know it'll be executed from RAM. Um, so, if we look down through, you'll notice there might be a few notes here. You see 8 megahertz, it's actually 4. Basically, what I did uh, um, to kind of port this is all of the, some of the calculations for the dividers were based upon that there is a uh, uh, 8 megahertz crystal. Uh, well, I kind of did it based upon there was a 4 and kind of looked in the registers. The only thing we have to really know at the end is that right here there's a comment that says our core frequency is 96 megahertz, our bus frequency is 48, the flex bus um, to 48, and the flash is at 24 megahertz. 
Um, and then at the end of it, the other thing is I know they enable like the clocks to the USB peripherals, but uh, everything else you kind of have to do on your own as you need them. I've also defined in my clock.h kind of a core clock and a peripheral bless clock that can kind of be used whenever you're writing code that you don't have to manually type in the value. So to make a long story short, to, to, to use this function, you got to copy in the, the appropriate files, call init clock, and once you call init clock, as long as your hardware is okay, uh, you'll be up and running at 96 megahertz. So um, that'll be it for today.